The St. Francis Auditorium was created as a much-needed secular civic center. So why did they make it follow the form of a church? Well, the idea was to connect with the social roots of this region. Churches were the only big public buildings traditionally, and that's where people gathered. Well, it certainly worked. For the opening ceremonies in November of 1917, 1,200 people squeezed into this space. Good thing there were no fire marshals there. Now look up at the ceiling. It's the model of a traditional New Mexican roofing system. They're those huge beams that support the roof. The vigas, they're called around here. And then the small poles arranged in a kind of herringbone pattern. Those are called latillas. Now, Hewitt, the director, and the architect Rapp were dead against all this woodwork because they were intent on fireproofing the place. But Jesse Nussbaum supported that woodwork. He fought for it, and he prevailed. You see, he was fresh from working on the ruined Pecos mission, and he modeled the vigas here and the shaped corbels at each end and the chip-carved ornament on the fragments that he found out at Pecos. He wanted to avoid the splitting of the huge beams that he'd seen in the architecture of the region. So he found a supplier in California who towed lumber down the coast from Washington in Oregon. Now, in the process, salt water seeped into the logs, replacing and pushing out the sap. Nuss had the Vegas cut in California, then covered with tarps for slow drying as they were shipped by railroad to New Mexico. The herringbone saplings, the latillas, were gathered in the mountains around Santa Fe. They'd been scouted by Nuss on his motorcycle. He found a stand of aspen saplings that had withstood a forest fire. Still standing, the fire had burnt off the leaves and sealed up the sap inside. The great acoustics in this auditorium are in large part due to Nussbaum's woodwork, but also to the irregular surfaces of the stucco-covered walls. Musical performances have always been important here, and today we have Santa Fe's prestigious chamber music festival. I hadn't realized that this town's full name was the Via Real de Santa Fe de San Francisco and that the monks of the order founded by St. Francis came with the Spanish conquistadors to the southwest 80 years before the pilgrims landed. This is the story the murals tell. The young artist, Donald Beauregard, composed the series while he was studying in Europe. He used symbolic figures, slender and pale, very much in the style of the French master Pouvy de Chavannes. Beauregard did a full set of preparatory sketches, but tragically he succumbed to cancer at the age of 29. He'd only finished the central panel of the three-part composition on the left, which depicts Santa Clara. Now members of the museum staff were called upon to complete the work. Kenneth Chapman had to do the panels of St. Francis on the left wall and up on the stage. Go over and take a close look at the single panel on the extreme left, where you see the saint kneeling by an archway. Chapman, Chap, the illustrator, was used to working in drawing, working in watercolor, but he'd never before been asked to do oil on canvas, and certainly not in this scale. You can feel how tentative he was, painstakingly following Beauregard's design and carefully filling in the drawn lines, a bit like a coloring book. Well, what a contrast on the opposite wall. Carlos Vieira took on the subjects of the Franciscans in the New World. Vieira was an accomplished artist who'd already done paintings of missions and murals of Mayan ruins. The central three-part panel, where a Franciscan intermediary stands between the Spanish and the Indians, there he just transformed the indigenous figures that Beauregard has sketched as kind of primitive and submissive. And with strong colors and sure brushwork, Vieira depicted a proud, fierce people as noble as their Spanish counterparts. Now, you might wonder why the single panel to the right of the stage shows Christopher Columbus. Well, Columbus went with his son to a Franciscan monastery for help, and it was a Franciscan monk close to Queen Isabella that got her to fund his expedition. Vieira had done a spell as a sailor himself, and clearly he identified with the explorer, to the point that he turned the figure of Columbus into a portrait of Carlos Vieira.